how often to recenter? All right, Tony, how often do you recenter? I mean, it's usually, I mean, the stock usually dictates that for me. I would say on a trade that doesn't go well, three times. I was going to say four, I'm going to say three times. In how many days? In a 20, in a 20 some odd day 24 period. 24 day period? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. So on a trade that doesn't go well, like I just closed Baidu. I had a roll one time, but I've only had it on for 10 days or uh, a little bit more. It was three weeks, but I rolled one time. I would say that I roll and recenter way more often than Tony. Um, recentering is a little different. Well, than I pick the stocks that don't move that much when I use a strangle. You like yeah. to um, challenge yourself. So now there's a difference between adjusting and recentering. I adjust very often. I don't recenter as often, but I would say over the life of a certain underlying, like like something like Tesla, I might recenter every day. Something like uh, Coinbase, I might recenter. So what was your question? How many times do I recenter? Or how many Re times do I adjust? Recenter, not adjust. Oh, recenter. Uh, not not as much as you at all. Okay, so. No. Like that's like kind of you know buying the guts, selling the wings, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just it's just normalizing your delta. So we yep. decided to take a look at this because we get a lot of questions. I do it often on high vol highly volatile stocks. I do it less often on obviously less volatile stocks, but just to give you a clue, what we found was interesting. And of course, for larger accounts, it it's more cost effective to recenter than it is for smaller accounts. Because you know, smaller accounts, the commission is a higher percentage. That's why the the fills are the exact same. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the slide. Next slide. So, copying from the market makers playbook, if we don't want to have a directional assumption about an underlying, it's best to stay delta neutral. While our trades may start out that way, as the underlying moves, our deltas are likely to change. By rolling the strikes, we can recenter our position. Okay, so this is just adjusting. I take it back. Adjust, adjusting. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, so it's adjusting, just adjusting. I'll stand with my answer. Yeah. If it goes, you you know, if it's not working, but still a profitable-ish trade, it's about three times. Okay, so this is adjusting and recentering. It's not just recentering. Yeah. Yep. And so I do this quite often. I would say I'm I'm about double the times of Tony, and. Mm -hmm. The more frequently we do this, the less sensitive we'll be to the directional moves in the spot price. But the more friction we will encounter in the form of commissions and fill prices. So how much does our frequency of recentering affect our typical carry deltas? Good question. We have, never, we have never studied this. Let's go to the next slide. So 15 years of daily option data in the SPY. We considered selling 45 days to expiration strangles with 20 delta strikes. We managed at 21 days. We considered traders who would recenter their strikes with different frequencies, ranging from daily to never. Okay, okay. So what they're going to look at here is somebody who you know really like uh, always. You know, we get the questions. We'll we'll get them on confirm and send. We get them on emails all the time. You know, should I have eight deltas? Should I should I roll today or you know I have two deltas? Should I roll today? I have forty deltas. Should I roll today? Should I have rolled? I think they're going to look at each day. That's a pretty good. Is that going to be a good study? It is. Um, and so, so we consider traders who would recenter their strikes with different frequencies ranging from daily to never. And we observe for each of these traders the average absolute deltas on their positions. Okay? Okay. okay. Let's go to the next slide, Beth. Okay. So this is kind of the meat of the entire thing. Um, it. If you're recentering every daily is one, two, three, four, five, um, or two, three, four, six, eight, twelve, and then twenty-four. All right, just to see what happens after twenty-four days. So what we found is using spy that basically after twenty-four days, your deltas go from assuming that originally you sold the twenty delta put the twenty the twenty delta call and the twenty delta put, right? Your yeah. deltas become they moved to 16 deltas one way or the other. So if you're doing this in the SPY, you need to be long. 16 deltas total. One could be 36, the, uh, the other could be uh, 20, right? Right, whatever, 16 Got deltas. Okay. Net, right. There's a net 16 deltas at, at the end, 16.3 mm -hmm. deltas. 
um, which could be significant if you know you have a decent for every 10 lot that's 160 deltas and you know over the course of a month 160 deltas in the spy could be what's the monthly expected move in there right now because i ivy's really low in spy the, the monthly for spy yeah i got it for for well, one let's month take a look. 30, 30 some odd days is around uh 14 dollars okay so if you're talking around 14 dollars then you're talking about but i can go 45 days be around 17 and a half okay so if you're talking about 17 and a half dollars on 16 deltas okay um mm -hmm. that's uh what is that you're trying to do seven, seven times 16.5 seven 17 115 deltas per 17 times 16.5 yeah 115 and change no that kid's not that's not right 17 times what 17 16.5 times 17 oh 16.5 yeah times 17 I, you're looking at 280 okay so that's kind of the the expected outlier range of what you could lose on that position i'm just saying you know I'm not, I'm not subtracting the original premium that you collected but it's a 280 dollar move and so if i'm going to take it one step further and be a little bit more abstract we always talk about you know when should you at least i talk about which is a lot more important than what you say um when should i like adjust a strangle and i always say when it gets to around 15 deltas I'm looking to do something with my strangle. And if you look here, if that's kind of taking, if, if after three, four, five days, my delta gets to 15 to 25 is what I would say, I'm looking to reduce my delta in half. It really holds up here when the average, remember this is the average, is somewhere around 16 deltas. I don't want it to get above that 15 to 25 deltas on the overall trade. I think that holds pretty true here if the average is 16. Yeah. That's my takeaway. Well, all I'm going to say is that the so the average move on an unadjusted position on a one lot is the max range is 280. So you're taking the credits received and you know there's there's a 280 dollars swing just based on this delta if you never make an adjustment mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. make an adjustment okay which is interesting so the average carried absolute delta on a per day basis is only 3.5 and so when i say that i adjust almost daily or every other day whatever it is well i can keep my deltas within five then i'm basically eliminating most of my outlier risk because remember after 24 days once that position comes off or rolls or whatever, it's done. We're done. Yeah. There so there's go. no outlier risk. And I've essentially reduced my positions, you know, down to a minimal number. So I think what's interesting here is this gives you real context around um, the average carried absolute delta, which I which is kind of where I was going earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so for me every day, every other day, whatever it is, every third day, you know, keeping it under five deltas for each one lot. So if you do, if you do a, if you do a 10 lot, you're keeping it to 50 shares. If you do a 20 lot, you're keeping it to a hundred shares of stock. It's very manageable with no outlier risk. It like kind it. of validates, I think it validates the argument to make the adjustments, but I can also see how other people are like, hey, you know what? I don't want to do that. I just want to, I'm, I can live with 16 deltas in 24 days. I can see yeah, that too. Yeah, that's true. That's I true. like the adjusting part, but now you know what the numbers are. I don't think I've ever seen this displayed in all the years I've been trading. I've never seen the average carried absolute delta from adjusting strangles. Never seen this. I would have no mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Now I know one, two or three days, you're basically wrapped around five deltas, which is very manageable and this is spy very manageable but this is spy other things like netflix is gonna be more sure sure and um, again it's the average yeah all right let's go to the next slide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you want our trading to remain indifferent to movements in the underlyings we should strive for maintaining delta neutrality or something close uh -huh. if positions were left alone from 45 days to 21 days even starting from delta neutral we would have carried plus or minus 16 deltas on average. Recentering positions reduced this to, to just three and a half deltas, 
which is likely a good practice for active traders with larger accounts. For smaller accounts, however, the friction from commissions and fill prices can add up um, with very frequently recentering. Now, the truth is that the, the friction from the fills and the commissions are the exact same um, for both those accounts, large or small. The difference is it's a bigger percentage of the small account. And then for smaller accounts, we need to accept more risky propositions than larger's around recentering about once a week was a good middle ground for reducing carry deltas while only placing a fraction of the total trades. Again, the arguments, again, with some of the challenges with a smaller account, but suggesting here that a minimum of once a week is a good middle ground. That's a very, that's a very nice study taking into consideration a smaller account, too. And the number of days, I never really would have thought like what the delta would be. It was a nice way of looking at things, because I'm delta-centric, and I think you are, too. I For mean, sure. Very good. All right, awesome. Hey, listen, let's take a quick 90-second break. Look at the E-mini S&Ps down, down six and change, sodden up. Volatility only up about three cents. Um, you called it. You rang the bell. Props go to you. This is called job security. We'll be back in 90 seconds. We got Mr. Scott Sheridan next.